dengue viral infections are the number one killer, killer mosquito infectious disease in the world and causes a significant problem uh, in Sri Lanka and many countries, especially the Asian countries. Uh, and it makes headlines in newspapers in Sri Lanka every day. So uh, our main aim has been to do research on dengue viral infections to find out why only some people develop severe dengue and to find out if we can come up with a treatment uh, for uh, treating uh, severe dengue infections. So uh, about uh, 390 million in, uh, individuals are infected with dengue infection every year and of these about 96 uh, uh, million develop uh, apparent uh, dengue infections. Now, uh, Although dengue causes a lot of problems, so many deaths in Sri Lanka uh, and so many hospital admissions, so, many, so much morbidity and mortality, only around 10% of individuals who are infected with the dengue virus develop severe forms of dengue infection uh, which are called dengue hemorrhagic fever and dengue shock syndrome. So what basically happens when somebody is infected with the dengue virus is people who develop severe dengue, uh, they are uh, the cells lining their blood vessels which are called endothelial cells are stuck together with a cement like substance so uh, what happens is uh, this uh, cement like substance the, the gap that joins these cells uh, becomes a little bit loose and fluid leaks from the capillaries so this fluid leakage is the main problem that occurs in severe dengue and our main focus has been tr to find out what causes the fluid leakage, what, what mediators causes this fluid leakage. So we have identified a potent mediator that causes this and we have, uh, fortunately there is already a drug available that uh, blocks this mediator. So currently we are uh, conducting a clinical trial using this drug to find its efficacy in the treatment of acute dengue infection. Uh, we are conducting this clinical trial at the Infectious Diseases Hospital in Sri Lanka in, col uh, in collaboration with Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikram and of course there are a lot of people in this stream, it's a, it's a huge effort and uh, we are hopeful that this drug might work but just in case, uh, like most drugs do, that it doesn't work, we are identifying other substances that might cause CP dengue so that we might find uh, drug targets for those and also what causes the increase in these uh, mediators that cause vascular leak in the first place so that if we find out what causes the increase in these mediators maybe we can find a way to stop uh, these mediators from um, like, uh, being produced uh, in the first place. Uh, now as I mentioned earlier uh, when individuals develop dengue only some uh, go on to develop severe dengue uh, which is around 10 percent so basically 90 percent of the individuals who develops in, uh, who are infected with the dengue virus do not develop any clinical symptoms at all or develop a mild febrile illness. So uh, uh, one of our other aims has been to find out why only some people develop severe dengue and what causes uh, uh, the people who are, who are infected with dengue virus to develop asymptomatic disease or a protective type of immune response. So in our university, we have a primary health care centre called the Family Practice Centre which caters to a large po uh, population around the university and we have recruited over 1,500 individuals uh, through the Family Practice Centre and we are studying their immune responses longitudinally uh, for five years. So I've already completed two years of, of, of this study and uh, around 90% of adults uh, who we have recruited have had uh, been in, have been infected with a dengue virus and around 50% of children have been also infected with dengue virus but the majority which is around 80 to 90% have had uh, asymptomatic infection so uh, we, have, we have been looking at both T-cell responses and antibody responses uh, uh, in these two individual groups of individuals that is individuals who develop severe dengue and individuals who develop mild forms of dengue to find out what differences are there in these two groups to identify uh, what sort of immune responses are associated with protection because the main hurdle in developing a safe and effective dengue vaccine is the lack of immune correlates of protection so uh, our main aim is to find out what are the t-cell correlates of protection and what are the antibody correlates of protection which will be useful uh, for safe and effective vaccine development